a common question that we ask, given a set of vectors, is if we have another vector, when is that vector in the span of those vectors? And this shows up, for instance, if we solve a homogeneous linear system, and we have a bunch of solutions that we know um, are, are actually solving that system. But let's say we don't know exactly what that system is. We just know we have a, this collection of solutions. And if somebody hands us another vector, then we can ask, is that vector a, definitely a solution of the system that we have? And in this case, since we don't know the system, we can't plug in that vector to check. Instead, what we have to do is check if that vector is in the span of the vectors that we have already. If that vector is in the span of the vectors that we already have, then that vector is definitely a solution. But it doesn't tell us that if it's not in the span of those vectors, then it's not a solution, because we might not have had um, a set of vectors that span the solution set. But at the very least, it gives us a criteria for um, guaranteeing that if that vector is in the span, it's definitely a solution. And likewise, you can ask, well, if I have a bunch of vectors that I happen to know solve an inhomogeneous equation, and somebody hands me another vector, is there a similar criteria? And there is, and that involves the notion of affine span, which we talked about in the last video. So the question that we could ask is, given vectors v1 through vk, and another vector, u in Rn, when is u in the affine span of these vectors v1 through vk? Now, in order for us to solve this problem, then we have to be able to write u as a linear combination of v1 through vk, right? But because it's an affine combination, we have an additional constraint on what these coefficients could be. And that constraint is that lambda 1 plus lambda k equals 1, which is also a linear system in the unknowns lambda 1 through lambda k. And therefore, if we want to solve this system, this question is equivalent to the following one, which is, is the augmented matrix where we take our vectors v1 through vk, augment it with the vector u, but in addition, augment this further by one additional row stating that 1 equals, so now this is the number 1, equals 1 dot 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 1. Let me write this 1 so it's clear. So this vector is just denoting the fact that it could have several entries. So we have an additional row in our augmented matrix. And the question is, is this consistent? So this is actually how we would solve such a problem. And how does it show up in solving inhomogeneous systems? We'll get to that after we talk about what an affine subspace is and the fact that the solution set of an inhomogeneous system is an affine subspace. So for this, let's just briefly recall a vector subspace. I'll put vector usually in parentheses, but a vector subspace of Rn is a, first of all a subset, let's call it V, such that three conditions hold. Now there are many equivalent ways to define such a thing, but this one seems pretty concise and simple. And the first condition is that the zero vector is in V. The second condition is that if you take a vector in V and you scale it by any number, then that scalar multiple is also in V. So lambda V is in V, provided that the vector V was in V to begin with and lambda is a real number. And three, 
The third condition is that if I take any two vectors in V, then the sum of them are in V. So let's write U plus V is in V for all pairs U and V that are already in V. And this is what a vector subspace is. Now this definition of a vector space is a little bit algebraic. It's telling us when certain vectors are in V, and we can have a little bit more of a geometric interpretation of a, what a vector subspace is by using affine combinations. So equivalently, V satisfies, which means that if V satisfies the following conditions I'm about to write, then it satisfies this one, and conversely, let's call it instead of I and 2, so let's use I because the first one's the same. The zero vector is in V. And the second condition, which is sort of a combination of these two, is that T U plus 1 minus T V is in V for all T in real numbers and for all U and V in V. Now this is exactly a linear combination of the vectors U and V. So if I take two vectors u and v inside of v, then this affine combination is describing the set of all points along the straight line through those two vectors. So this is saying that a subspace can also be described as a plane that contains the zero vector. And plane could mean hyperplane. And this is because we always have the straight line through any two points in our subspace. Now, the fact that we've written it this way allows us to define an affine subspace in a much more closely related fashion to this definition because for an affine subspace, we'll only be able to combine, combine vectors in an affine way. So we define an affine subspace is a subset A of Rn such that and now we drop this first condition. So all we require is that affine combinations of two vectors are always inside. So Tu plus 1 minus Tv are in V for all same conditions as here. And you can ask, well, maybe an affine subspace should be, if I take any collection of points inside of it, then the affine span of those points is inside of V. And that actually follows from this condition and the usual properties of scalar multiplication in vector spaces and how you add them. So the main example that we want to illustrate is the solution set of any linear system Ax equals b. This is just notation for a linear system where b is a vector in Rm, and A is an m by n matrix. So the solution set of this is an affine subspace of Rn. Now, the solution set of an inhomogeneous system is not a vector subspace because in general zero is not a solution. In fact, when zero is a solution, then it exactly is a subspace. And when zero is not a solution, we get this more general notion of an affine subspace. And it's a fact that affine subspaces are translates of vector subspaces. And what do I mean by that? A is an affine subspace if and only if there exists a vector v in Rn 
such that if I take the subs if I take this affine subspace A and subtract V from it, now what this means is the set of all vectors of the form U minus V, where U is in A. If this subset of Rn is a subspace in this sense, is a vector subspace. In fact, we can use any vector inside of A to translate it to the origin. So in fact, V will be a vector in A. In fact, any vector in A will make this a vector subspace. So the picture for this is actually really nice. I guess I shouldn't have called it A because I called this linear system A. That may be potentially confusing. Um, so maybe let's call this script A. So let me use a script A here. Um, and fortunately, the letter A was only used in this one example. But let me write it like this here so it's the same. So there's no conflicting notation. OK, so here's our affine subspace A. And if we take any vector in here, let's call it U. No, let's call it V. So V points from 0 up to where that vector is. And if we take this vector and we subtract it, then V minus itself will be 0. So I know that this plane is going to contain the 0 vector. And so here we have A minus V. And no matter which V we picked, right, if we picked another one, let's say we picked this vector right here, let's call this one U, then if we translate that, U minus itself is 0, so we also get this plane back as well. And so a good application of this, of this uh, sort of mathematical object is if the vector xp, p for particular, is a solution to ax equals b for some linear system, like in the previous example, then the solution set, meaning all the solutions, of Ax equals B is, as we know, the particular solution plus the homogeneous solution set. So it's the set of all sums of particular solutions with homogeneous solutions. So Axp solves the system this, and Ax homogeneous solves the associated homogeneous system. So if A represented the solution set of an inhomogeneous system and A minus V represents the solution set of a homogeneous system, then all we have to do is pick one of these solutions and then all of these solutions and then take that solution and translate it by that vector, which was a particular solution of the inhomogeneous system.